causes slight bulge at the equator. Polar ice causes compression at South Pole. Well, whatever. Um, I'm not going to get into it, but it's it's uh, if you look at if you if you if you can picture in your mind if um, you know, you're lucky enough to have one, and um, you can you know you look at the uh, the pear shape as the pear shape grows with the melting ice, it's going to act like a, a larger leverage. There's a pear right here. There's the pear shape. I don't know if you can see that. Can you see that? Yeah, I think you can. It just looks a little faded out with the uh, black screen, but it's a pear shape on the southern hemisphere. So the he southern hemisphere has a larger ocean mass because the northern hemisphere has a third more land mass above uh, sea level. So you have a bigger um, water mass in the southern hemisphere. That is just like you going out and moving, you know, a one-ton stone with the with the big bar. Okay, the moon's the bar. And uh, the moon's you and the bar, and you're prying the stone and moving it across the driveway to build yourself a pyramid, right? Same, same theory. As the bulge grows, it's going to tweak the tilt into a lower degree tilt. And I'm surmising it's probably like 11 degrees that when you do get a, a, a move, it's going to be a... I mean, we're getting a small move now, but if we have some kind of an earthquake or you know a giant um, tectonic plate slip that could actually be enough energy to really rock us into a 20 or even a lower degree tilt and that and the uh, the Tropic of Capricorn and Cancer we're at 23 and a half or we're, you know slightly less now because things are moving but um, you know the tropics of Capricorn and Cancer will be down at 11 degrees so the Sun's not going to go any higher than that you know, midday, uh, if you look up over your head, if you're in a latitude like 41, like I am up in Massachusetts, uh, you know, Taxachusetts, it's, uh, you know, it, it won't be coming up overhead, it'd be, it'd be way south. I mean, it's south now, because it's coming up at 23 and a half, but I'm at 40, but I'm still looking south to see the, uh, on the equinox, uh, which is in a few, which is next week, or another week or two. So, anyways, just throwing you some, uh, some uh, graphics out there. Here's another graphic I made. This picture shows the Earth at the glacial maximum at the peak of the 104,000 year ice age, at which point the Moon's gravitational field tug on the greater ice mass, thus pulling the Earth into the interglacial water age axial tilt that we're currently at, like I just said, 23 and a half. Uh, this, is the, uh, this is where we're at right now. Again, it's more pear shaped, so but you got the lines there. You see the moon on your left or your right, and uh, this picture shows the Earth at the peak of the interglacial water age, which we're, we're nearing right now, and no ice at the poles. At which point, the moon's gravitational field tug on the greater ocean water mass, thus pulling the Earth into ice age axial tilt position. It's time to migrate. Once that happens, it's time to move, you know, um, do a dry run down to South America, you know, I don't know, Africa someplace, just check it out, because you might be doing it for real someday, or your children will, or their grandchildren, and, and you know, I got some ideas on what the high mark, because the high water marks were made by the previous interglacial societies. I know where they are, and I'm not, I'm not here to scare everybody, I'm not doing the chicken little, everybody run for me run for uh, you know Guatemala or uh, Belize I mean I'm not I'm not doing that I'm like you know I'm just I'm just putting this out there if you want to sink your teeth into something that's really got some meat and potatoes in it my theory here this this could save your butt going forward or your, or your family's butt 26,000 year procession not only earlier I said this is actually this picture's in the wrong place and wrong order here but that's the uh, procession. Like I said, we are in the uh, winter procession right now. That's what the real thing you got to worry about. When you're in the winter, winter side of the uh, Earth wobble, excuse me, Earth wobble, Earth procession. That is when, and if you have a tip, if you have a, t a tilt change, a lower degree tilt change, that's going to drive in a super cold, overnight freezing, flash freezing um, environment. In the northern and southern hemisphere, I don't like to say the southern hemisphere, but latitudes, southern latitudes, 30 and above, northern latitudes, 
uh, 30 and above. Um, oh, sorry about that. I skipped one minute. All right, we're in Pisces right now. Okay, ironically, it's made of fish. I mean, the people that put these things together, this isn't just airy fairy stuff. These symbols actually relate to the to the uh, environment that we're in right now. We're in the big flood, you know. So, uh, you know, fish, you know, Pisces. Uh, what other symbols can you use? And then we're getting out of it, and we're going into Aquarius again, another water sign. You know, I get the guy pouring the big jug. All right. So hopefully, gonna wrap it up here. Uh, his, um, there is something about the moon. I co-wrote with a great friend of mine, uh, Wendy H. Salter. And um, it has all this stuff that I just went through in writing, graphs, more detailed, more history behind it. And there's a lot of ancient uh, knowledge out there that is, you know, on the four, from the four corners of the planets that have this knowledge in it. And um, here's my other book, Pyramid Gravity Force. Um, just, just going out there doing my bit. You can check out my other videos I got, uh, you know, on uh, my theories about, uh, again, another book I have on my theories about gravity and um, why these pyramids were built to, uh, you know, basically large pyramids were built to keep volcanoes open. And um, the uh, Hawaiian hotspot in particular lines up with the uh, Giza Plateau uh, pyramids. So, again, you got uh, that. And then, uh, you know, tsatmoon.com is where you can buy the book uh, for the moon. And uh, Pyramid Gravity Force, you can buy the, uh, the book on Amazon. There's links off these two websites for uh, different places to buy the book. Support your researches, you know. Even if you don't read, buy the book, blow it out the window. Use it for a fire starter, you know. Maybe you got a refrigerator or a washing machine and it's wobbling. You slide it underneath, it'll be perfect. You won't hear any noise anymore. Um, anyways, it's, uh, hope I uh, yeah, shed some light on this. Again, not, not putting down Al, not putting down uh, Maluden, not putting down anybody that's done any work out there because we all build off. I, I wouldn't be where I'm at with my theories without these guys doing the, you know, the groundwork and the research that I could actually learn and, and, and put, pull my, uh, you know, pull my moon into the theory. Both my books have a moon on the front cover, you know, so I'm Mr. Moon, I guess, you know, I, I might have to have a name change, but anyways, again, John Shaughnessy here. Subscribe, 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 you know? Like my stuff, I work for likes, thumbs up, thumbs down, whatever. If you wanna comment on my work, go ahead, I'm, I, I'm, I'm available. Check me out on Facebook, got a couple of groups there. Uh, there is something about the moon and I got a couple of books on that. You know, I just, I got a, uh, you know, just my regular f Facebook page. I'm on there all the time. So, um, and I'm on Google too, so I'm easy to get. And, um, you know, let's get together here. We gotta, we gotta get the truth out. We gotta get the truth out about these theories. All right, talk to you later.